Uh, my name is Carlton Imbens. That's, oh, it's Pop. I get Pop, can you just- hey, Su Susan, can you take my phone, actually? From what I understand- Either it is like or you are famous. <laughs> Let's say I want to understand. From what I understand, you take data and you kind of run your own experiments without actually running an experiment. Like you, you can take data and use it as if it, it was your experiment. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of, you know, in a lot of cases when we try to get the, the answer to important questions, we do experiments. When they try to figure out if the vaccines for COVID were working, they did all sorts of experiments. But in a lot of cases uh, in economics, you can't do experiments. Kind of just doesn't work. We, we can't say, well, you go to school and we're going to have this whole other set of kids and they're not allowed to go to school. Yeah, that's not. So, so that kind of, that wouldn't work. And so we need to kind of try to tease out those things from, from data where people just make their choices and kind of do what they, they want to do. And so we kind of try to come up with clever ways of still teasing out these effects. Uh, the, and so you might like use like behavior things or- well, so kind of, no. What I've done is, is a lot of the methodology kind of so trying to help people understand exactly how these method, these things work and giving them better methods for, for doing these things. And so another study that, that one of the, my friends who won the prize with me, uh, George Angris did, was he, want, he was interested in the effect of getting more schooling, getting more education on earnings. And he used the fact that compulsory schooling laws change a little bit. Uh, so if you're born on September 30th, you need to go to school earlier than if you're born on October 1st, because it doesn't really make you a different person, but it makes you get, on average, get a little bit more schooling. And so kind of he used that as an instrument, kind of as a way of, of teasing apart the correlation and the causality. And he could see from there that the people who kind of, who stayed in school just a little bit longer, found out that they were actually uh, having higher income later. It's very interesting Thank you. how you can take uh, like data from like things that were completely like not like not intended for you yeah. for anything and then and then use it to, to draw these like astounding conclusions. I'm Andrew Imbens, uh, spelling of my first name is A-N-D-R-E-W. Uh, I'm gonna assume my last name is, is <laughs> it's the now. same as mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so congratulations. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, that was a very exciting morning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I was wondering about some of the applications of what you've been doing because you know, we've talked about like what kinds of like what it is but so what what might you well yeah so so you know kind of in general we were interested in what would be you know for social policy it's kind of important to know what would happen if you give everybody some guaranteed income what would that do to uh, society what would these would people still try look for a job or would they kind of just be happy to sit at home because you can't do an experiment there you could look at uh, people who play the lottery because then some of those people are going to win some big amount of money. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like having a basic income. In fact, kind of when we, the lottery we looked at in Massachusetts, if you win half a million dollars, you would get a check for half a million dollars. You would get a check for $25,000 every year for 20 years. So that's kind of very much like having a guaranteed income. We kind of looked at what happened to them. Did they stop working? Did mm -hmm. they retire early? Or did they keep working? And it turned out most of the people really just kept working. It was kind of very nice for them to win the lottery, but it didn't really change what uh, what they did. That helps kind of inform public policy and it kind of and it gives you a credible way of looking at uh, what the effect is of having having some income, which would be very hard to do uh, otherwise. All right, so. <laughs> I'm a little interested in making sure that I understand this. So, you know, if I have to explain it, I, I know my stuff. Let's say I want to understand whether not having homework for math specifically makes people enjoy it more. And so I've, I've got my school. Yeah, you could well imagine that that would be the case. Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't like homework. I do like math. I don't have math homework. Maybe they're correlated. So my school advertises itself for kids who love math and they don't have math homework since we need more data than just that. We'll look at the other schools in my area, uh, Palo Alto High School and, and Gunn High School, both also take from the same batch of students in, in the, the you know, Bay Area, and they do have math homework. 
what you're saying is that I can't just take a bunch of students from proof school and a bunch of students from gun and ask who enjoys math more. We need a better test group. And so what you're saying is that I should go to gun and Palo Alto High School and I should find students who've not only applied to proof, but gotten into proof. They're, they're clearly kids who could have gone to proof school, but didn't and now have math homework. Yeah. And so, so you kind of could also look at kids who kind of didn't go to proof, but were really interested in math. But it was kind of too long a commute, so they left far away from the train station and it would have been a long bike ride or long drive to the train station. But otherwise, they would have gone. And obviously, living far away from the train station is probably not really correlated. It has nothing to do with liking math or not. You wouldn't expect so, it to, at least. Yeah. And so, and kind of more generally, there's a lot of cases where you have you want to compare these two groups, but you're worried about them being different in, lots, in other ways. And kind of you look for these these small things that make people, that change the incentives uh, a little bit, but that, that do not have anything to do with who they are or what their preferences are. Right, so, so it all sort of boils down to, if you wanna know whether thing A has an effect on people, you compare really similar people. Like you, yeah. wanna, you wanna make them as similar as possible in all the ways except for thing A. Yeah, and, all, and you kind of use these instruments that kind of change this incentives to be in one group rather than the other. Things that, that people don't have choice over, so that yes, exactly. it's, it's like a randomized study. Yeah, exactly. And so that for the, that small group, it, is, it becomes like a randomized study. It becomes like an experiment. You get the benefits of an experiment without actually having to run an experiment. Incredible stuff, clearly. <laughs>